Delta Company presents Diet Challenge, a unique reality project with nine participants with the diagnosis of type 1 diabetes. Of course, we're not complaining, but we're showing how tough this really is. What really happens to a person with diabetes, their real life. We'll show the people that we're totally cool, that we can do this. This is not a show, this is real work. This is a six-month transformation process. The first three months are under the supervision of an endocrinologist, a trainer, and a psychologist. How many weight workouts were you planned for this week? Three. How many did you do? Two. Second stage. Three months of independent work without the experts. Anastasia doesn't comply with anything. She's a very bad girl. I already ate in the morning. Real stories. Real success. <laughs> It's hard. Sometimes you cry yourself to sleep. Real victories. If I'm scared, I move forward. Reality project about the life of people with diabetes. We challenged ourselves. Have you? Just last week, the participants had their first group meeting with the experts at the cottage. It was full of new discoveries and positive emotions. And the second meeting is already full of doubts and even tears. Anastasia is bad with reports. I don't know how she's going to do this, but this means she will have to share her meal diary with all the participants. After our first meeting, in the beginning, I was like, hmm, okay, so they're making you do stuff, yeah? They lay out the rules for how you must live and how you must act. Dash, listen, we saw the training with Alexei. Oh, come on, strange things were happening, screaming. I can't imagine doing it again. You don't need to imagine, you need to redo it. I keep pushing harder and harder, and he says I'm doing it wrong. He says I need more strength training and not just cardio. Rule number one of the diet challenge – mandatory completion of experts' recommendations and homework assignments. Rule number two – daily reports of the work done. Because if you leave now, promising one thing here and doing another back home, but posting your results builds discipline. Whether you want to or not, you'll do it. Unfortunately, not all the participants are doing it, and without it, the doctor can't help. We have no secrets here. Veronika's basil changes every hour. Go and figure it out. Changes every hour. That's why for me, firstly, the meal report is very important, yeah? Also, the report on self-control. And, of course, insulin injections. Even when I was pregnant, yeah, it was probably that period when I really paid attention to myself. But even then, I didn't do all that. And now you have to weigh your food and calculate everything. And the blood sugars are behaving very differently. God forbid if I weighed my food before. I didn't even think about that. Didn't know that anybody was doing that. Let's say you're at work and you didn't have enough time to write everything down. And now you have to sit there and try and remember what you ate that day. So you have to do it no matter what. Write down what you had right after your meal. That's the hardest part of it, but I think it's a matter of habit. Yes, it's a routine, but it's a routine that was consciously put in place and is needed. That's why it must be done, and I accept these rules of the game. According to the experts, Nyura Sharikova will have the hardest time getting into the work. The travel lover took off for Vietnam for two weeks, and instead of her progress reports, is only sending in exotic hellos to the group chat. What are you doing? You think that's okay? That's not very nice. Assume the position. Three, two, let's go. Crazy. 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 You can do it on your elbows or your hands. Point switch. In reality, we don't have much time. Only three months of hard work. That's why I'd like to warn you, if any of you do not implement the expert recommendations or slack off, 
will have to say goodbye to you. Because having such a participant here loses all meaning. What we're doing here is a question of life. I'm not afraid to say that. It's a question of life and death. It's very important and very serious. My grandmother had type 2 diabetes for 20 years and ended her life with an amputated leg. My second aunt has lived with diabetes for the past 50 years. She was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at an early age. She has a wonderful family, she has a child and her blood sugar levels are perfect today. And she does not have my grandmother's complications. You have arms and legs and a bright head on your shoulders. But you need disease compensation in order not to lose them. Your CPF, uh, carbohydrates, proteins and fats, are missing for 11th of May. Where are the numbers? No records? Keep your count every day, until it becomes automatic. Health is really the most important thing. Without it, I won't have that pretty picture on my Instagram, that car, or that new skirt that I want to show off. Well, the ratios are not bad, really. Okay, let's see what else is not working. I understand the carbs, proteins and fats, but what's a fat protein unit? How do I calculate the energy? I mean, I understood that some foods activate fast and some take more time. This means for each such meal, you either do a long bolus, it means you extend the insulin dose, which comes from a pump, or do a rapid one. To be honest, I have yet to figure it all out. Sorry if I got anything wrong. I counted it. I don't know. Let's see what Anastasia has to say about it. I can't tell if I completed the assignment or not. The project's endocrinologist Anastasia Plishova evaluated the participants' knowledge of diabetes and their level of compensation on a five-point scale. Dina Dominova scored the highest. She has almost no questions for the experts about the disease. And Dina seems to always have the answers for the diet challenge participants. I try to help out if I'm asked. I always answer, but let's be clear, I'm no doctor. And yes, I have great experience. I'm great at compensating. I know enough about the disease, stay on top of all the new trends and all that is happening in Russia and the world. But in terms of compensating, I never tell anybody to do this or do that. Firstly, I always say that there's such and such a rule. Secondly, I'll talk about what works for me. And thirdly, try doing this while monitoring your blood sugars and perhaps it will work for you. It's all very individual. It's different for everyone. Take Dima, for example, yeah? Who's also on the pen. And I'm on the pen. Lena, Dima, Nura and Kirill use an insulin pen for their injections. Nastya, Olya, Veronika, Dasha and Dina use an insulin pump. And we have completely different coefficients. Our body reacts differently to any product. Proteins, carbohydrates, it's all different. That's why each person needs an individual approach. Even insulin is not all the same. Insulin brands vary. What works for some might not work for others. Dina, tell me about your week, please. What's new? Difficult, hard and terrible. Is that enough? Dina, it seems to me that you're a very positive character who will always know how to make someone feel better and will lead the way to a positive life. Dina is in no mood for jokes today. This week the truth about her diabetes broke out and Dina is reaping the first fruits of her involvement on the Diet Challenge project. The project is very broad. It's social media and everything else. And I'm already being asked specific questions. And I wasn't entirely ready for that. And perhaps didn't react properly in some cases. I actually thought that, um, that my sugars are not affected by stress. But it turns out what were you stressed about? Was there a stressful situation? Yeah, there was. 
An additional challenge for the participants was the filming itself. It's been an entire month since casting, but being on camera still makes most of them uneasy. Like when I said that I've had diabetes for 23 years instead of 21. I still can't believe that I got that wrong. I've had diabetes for 33 years. I'm 33 years old. It's a scary feeling being on TV. I barely got any sleep. Four cameras from all angles. What is that? Hook you up to a mic? I didn't think it was going to be that serious. Veronika, we saw you actively training with Alexei outside on the mats. There, perfect. Yep. Nothing else to say. A perfect lunge. In reality, it's hard. Reverse lunges are a very difficult move. Don't go back too far. Did you notice any progress this week? Alexei said you can tell right away who's training hard. That comment alone made me feel like I'm doing a good job, and I will continue to try and make him happy. So, here's what I want to say to you. Right now, you're the most responsible participant here, because you did all of your homework that I assigned to you. Yeah, I look at photos and videos of girls at the gym and feel like a loser. I got 7,000 steps here. Stop it, it's not that easy. If I had to do 5,000 right now, for me, yeah, I rarely get to 3,000. Okay, now let's do some exercises. I'll watch your technique and give you some pointers so you can feel more confident at circuit training. Come here. Your job is to do 10 side sweeps, arms straight, 10 overhead pushes, then just straight arms out. It was very difficult after a second set. Three, two, go. I felt sick and was ready to puke. I've seen stars. Alexei put me down with my legs up. Relax, relax. That's normal. You're going to be dizzy if you get up. I laid there for about five minutes and was feeling better. I thought I was ready to continue. I got up and realized I can't do it. Because as soon as I got up, I felt dizzy. I just laid down until the end of the workout. On top of it, all these cameras, I was like a superstar. And you know, I'm laying there and thinking, my God, my friends are going to see this. The only place that the camera crew has yet to visit is the office of our psychologist. Every time the host tried to sneak in, he was asked to shut the door on his way out. Behind this door is Lena. Right now we're going to find out what they're chatting about. Let's go. Today, Lena will tell us her diabetes story. Tell us what you're talking about. Lena was diagnosed with diabetes at 13. She didn't really know what it was at that time, but she understood and felt that it was nothing good. I cried. I remember I had the flu. My temperature was around 40 degrees Celsius. This was six months prior to my diagnosis. Yeah, the flu was unbearable. Then, the following summer, I was constantly throwing up, feeling like I was going to faint. Came out of nowhere. My mom was asking around her friends and colleagues for advice describing my condition. She's losing weight, feeling dizzy all the time, and vomiting. People would tell her not to worry about it, saying it's just a teenager thing. Our kids are going through the same thing. And this went on for three months. And then I began to drink water at night by the bucket. I could drink as much as five liters per night. My mom said something was wrong and to go get checked. And my dad took me to the hospital. Tests showed sugar at 18 and ketonuria. I was hospitalized right away. The first thing Lena's father did is quit his business and join a non-profit diabetes association to find out as much as possible about the disease. The family's life is changed dramatically after Lena's diagnosis. I remember when I was still a kid. We lived in Saratov, and we were told that there was a shortage of insulin that I used, and we would not be able to get any. 
There was a time I thought it was the end, that I depend on the state and some drug. My whole life depended on it. So, I was offered insulin that they had, but back then it was scary. My parents could not afford it, and we would have to go to Moscow to get it. I would use what I could, and this went on for a year. There were times when there was almost nothing to eat. All we had was lentil. Yeah, that was a rough period. Thanks to her parents' efforts, Lena is beginning to cope with her diabetes quite quickly. The terrible disease is not in the way of her education and her prestigious job, and Lena's beloved husband can't take his eyes off his wife. We've always been together. We couldn't take a step without each other. They understood each other perfectly. They looked alike and even shared the same diagnosis. At first, he didn't even want to talk to me about it. I figured it out on my own after seeing the track marks on his hands. Then, I asked him head on. Once he even said he didn't have it. And then he had a hypoglycemia, and when I got him out, he told me it was epilepsy. He thought it was better than having diabetes. But two years later, he knew I felt for him. He didn't know that I was also diabetic. He couldn't figure it out, how I knew so much about diabetes. And he opened up to me. Lena would have returned the favor, if it wasn't for his categorical nature in everything related to diabetes. We have a child and he's one and a half years old, and he says he ran into a friend who has diabetes, and how he feels bad for her. And I said, why do you feel bad? His friend was 28 at the time. I said, why do you feel bad for her? Well, because she has diabetes her whole life and has no children. And I said, how come she doesn't have any kids? He said, what do you mean? You can't have kids with diabetes. Women with diabetes can't. I said, why can't they? He said, the kid will be affected or even die, or it would be very bad for the mother. In my opinion, that's just ignorant. Not everyone wants to get close to this situation. On the contrary, they repel it. I have patients that are literally, to this day, will not accept the fact that they have diabetes. A person does not want to admit that they are sick. Like my husband would say, I try to overcome it, I battle with this diabetes. Here comes hyperglycemia and I slip into a coma. I won't have any sweets because I don't accept diabetes, I want to beat it. To battle is a mythological and a heroic attitude towards life. There are other ways, and they are certainly available. In this sense, diabetes could be an enemy, it could be a teacher. Diabetes can be anything. It all depends on the position that a person will take in building a relationship with his disease. I compare diabetes to a marathon. It's like you're walking and it seems like it's not hard. You just need to realize that you must continue to do it. You can't stop. If you stop now, you won't reach the finish line through all the long hours and many years. An elevator. Whatever buttons you press is where it will take you. I think of diabetes like of a small child. Perhaps a child from a foster home. You can still discipline them before they're three or five years old. What you put into it now my foster child is already 15, so it's harder for me. The Diet Challenge participants spoke of their disease and compared it to an avalanche, a predator, and even a rainbow. But none of them spoke of diabetes as a way of life. Diabetes is not a lifestyle, because you can always change your lifestyle. Diabetes, on the other hand, is with us. We did not choose this way of life. A circumstance, a disorder that changes your way of life. Tell us, please, what has been bothering you? I'm exhausted. It's been three years since my husband passed and I can't get out of depression. I've given up on everything. I felt my vision starting to go. It felt like somebody dimmed the lights. 
Also, I felt numbness in my legs. Yeah, so these were some of my warning signals. Just follow with your eyes. He died not knowing that I had diabetes. And now I understand how wrong that was. Raise your eyebrows, frown, shut your eyes very tight. What I was afraid of already happened. Now I am fearless. Now, I don't know. After my husband's death, my consciousness changed. I remember walking in the park where my husband and I used to go for walks. And I see a couple arguing. Their kid is running around and they're arguing. I almost broke into tears. I want to yell at them. Stop arguing. Live a better life. Be happy that you are here now and together. No specific pathologies associated with diabetes were found during Lena's medical exam. She'll return home and relieve her son. He's been asking some serious questions lately. He always asks me if I'm going to die. I tell him no. And he says, but dad died. The psychologist told me to be honest with him, to tell it like it is. The reason for Lena's husband's death is said to be due to intoxication that developed as a result of the phlegm of the left lower extremity, ketoacidosis, decompensated diabetes. So, he says, you could also die if you have this disease. So, I explain to him that if you take care of yourself, nothing will happen. But he's scared, worried he might get sick. I tell him that if you continue to do sports like you're doing now, and watch what you eat, then maybe you won't. May I come in? Yes, come in, Lena. Hello. Hello. How are you feeling? Good. Everything is okay? Yeah, everything is great. Being on the project, I begin to realize that everything inside me is changing. I look at the people that are here and are taking part in this project. And I want to change my life. I feel like if I met a new man and fell in love, then everything would change. Я бы хотела нарисовать мечту. Солнце и ветер молнию на лету. I want to see the ocean. I want to be happy. I want to be the president of Russia. And that everybody was happy. Diet challenge. Time to grab your dream. See you in a week.